Chaos Space Marines are the fallen soldiers of the Imperium who have embraced the powers of chaos. They come in various shapes and sizes with twisted forms and corrupted armor. Hi, my name's Ben, this is the Mini Painting Page, and today I wanted to go over how I painted this Black Legion Chaos Space Marine Lord in a scheme that is achievable and replicable across an entire larger army. So let's not waste any time, jump straight in, and to start off we are going to be needing a can of black spray to undercoat or prime the model. We're going to be tackling the armour first, and here what we're going to want to do is grab a pot of light flesh, and then water it down slightly. Coming in, we can go around and edge highlight all of the armour on the model. Once this is done, we can then also do some optional volumetric highlights. For these, we can pick all of the areas that are flat surfaces that would reflect a lot of the light, such as sections on the arms and legs. Once this has dried, we can then follow it up with two thinned coats of a black wash, making sure to cover all of the armour that we've just painted, catching all of the edges that we've just highlighted as well. Once we've done that, we can make sure that we mop up any excessive pooling and then carry on. By doing this wash, what will happen is we will desaturate that flesh tone slightly and bring it into more of a grey tone, ready for our next steps, which is where we're going to be wanting to grab the light flesh again so that we can carry on. Taking the flesh tone that we've just used, what we want to do is go around and highlight the model's armour as we did with the last step, and we can use that last step as a guide as to where we're going to be highlighting. What we want to do on this occasion is try to reduce the surface area of this highlight compared to the last, which will give us a nice thin edge on this highlight. Once this is dry, we can then come in once more with a wash. Doing two thinned coats of blacked wash, should give us a nice gradual shift once it's dry from the black base coat up through the lighter greys formed by the washed flesh tone. And at that point, the armor is done. The reason that we want to use multiple washes of a thinned wash is because we don't want any details to be obscured by just putting thick layers of wash on top of this armor. So make sure to use thinned washes as we go in so that we don't lose any of that detail. With the armor done, next we can tackle the piping that is all across the model. And here to start off, what we want to do is grab a dark brown and base coat all of the areas in question. We will be trying to avoid all of the inner pipings where the casing has split and we can come in and touch these up with a wash later if needed. Once we have all of the piping covered in our base coat, we can then come in with our first highlight layer and we're going to use a technique here to add a little bit of texture to the model. Taking a thinned, desaturated yellow, what we want to do is pick out all of the upper areas of the pipe. However, rather than going in and doing a straight edge highlight or anything like that, what we want to do is build up a lot of thin lines working across the pipe to build out a scratched patterned highlight. Once we have done that and we're happy with the look and level of the scratches that we've done, what we can finish it off with is a nice quick brown wash, which will tie all of those colors together, as well as giving us some nice recessed definition around those areas as well. While we have the browns out for the pipes, we can also use some of them for the cape on this model. Naturally, this can be done on all of the loincloths and other similar fabrics on other models. What we want to do is grab the brown and go around the model and apply the darker brown as a base coat on all of the shadows and recessed areas of the cape. Then, once this is dry, we can come around and mirror this using a lighter brown, picking out all of the raised areas of the cape where the light would hit most. Due to this lighter color going over black, we may need to do a couple of coats. However, it is also worth noting that this is just a pre-shading base coat that we're doing. So it doesn't need to be crystal clear and perfect and consistent, but we do need to make sure that we get the bulk of that area in this lighter brown, and the darker brown will probably cover the recesses and the shadows without too much difficulty. Following this up, once it's all dry, we can grab a dark brown contrast paint, as well as the light brown that we used on the pre-shading slash guide tone stage that we've just done. Then what we want to do is wet blend these together on the model and on the cape itself. To do this, we have a couple of options, but for speed and the fact that I'm recording, what I'm going to be doing is covering the whole cape in this contrast. Then while the contrast is still wet, we can come in and start to mix in the lighter brown to all of the raised areas. We want to make sure to try and follow the guide tones that we laid down initially. This will help to give us a consistent transition and we won't have to worry as much about the darker colors seeping through on the brighter areas and we'll have a nice transition from dark to light on the cloak. 
Once the contrast and all the wet blending has dried, we can go in and give a little bit of a colour boost and a brightness boost to the cape. And we can do this by thinning down the light brown that we used as the highest highlight area so far, and then glaze this over the highest, brightest sections of the cape. Naturally, this will give a boost to brightness and also help with some of the blending. And at this point, once that's dry, we can call the cape done. Naturally, we can push this as far as we want. We can spend as much time as we want to spend blending that cape out and making it look beautiful. However, at this particular moment, that will suffice for most of the models in an army and will be perfectly good for going forward. So with that done and the cape sorted, let's move on to the fur, which is around the face chest area and isn't really a key detail. So to start this off, we're going to be wanting a light silvery gray tone. Taking this lighter gray, we want to overbrush the sculpted details on the fur. And because this isn't a key area on the model, we do want to make this quite quick and efficient. So once we've done the initial overbrush, which will pick out all of the largest panels on the sculpted fur, as well as all of the edges, and it will naturally leave the recesses black, we can come in and give it a wash of brown contrast once it is dry. Leaving that contrast itself to dry, we can then repeat the step, coming once again in with a overbrush of the silver light gray and trying to make sure that we catch all the finest areas and the very edges of the sculpted fur, following up with a final brown contrast wash. This will darken it all down and make it a nice consistent tone. As this isn't a key part of the model, I didn't want it to detract too much from the face of the model. So what I did is make it this darker color so that the face is still a central area of attention on the model. Talking about the face, let's tackle that now. And for the base coat, what we want to do is take a pot of reddish brown and put down a nice, clean, consistent coat across all of the skin on the model, which once dry, we can follow up with an application of a medium skin tone to all of the large and raised areas of the model, as well as all of the prominent areas, keeping that reddish brown in the recesses of the face. This leaves the highest areas and the sharpest details of the flesh. So to tackle this, we want to take a very pale, bright, light flesh. And then using this tone, we can go around and catch all of the highlights. So here we're looking at catching things like the brow, the cheeks, the nose, all of those prominent features. At this point, you may be thinking that the skin is looking a little bit pale, a little bit too desaturated. So don't worry, we're going to be fixing that with the next step, which is to grab a flesh wash. And what we're going to do is put this all across the face and all of the flesh that we've just painted. This will start to tint and harmonize all of those skin tones together and can then be followed up with a next step, which is a round of highlights using roughly a 50-50 mix of the lightest flesh tone we used and the flesh wash that we've just used on the previous steps. We can then go around on all of the previous areas on the skin and use the past highlight steps as a guide. Then if we want to, depending how it's come out and how we like it, we can give an optional final flesh wash on the face. With the face done, this does just leave us with a couple of areas that need to be done before we get onto that nice metal trim all across the model. We can try and quickly run through all of these areas that aren't as essential and are more minor. And starting off with the head of the weapon, what we're going to be doing is putting down a thick overbrush of a medium gray. Then it can be followed up with another color, which is going to be a dry brush of a lighter gray, catching all of those raised areas and all of the largest panels, things like that, that we would normally pick up from a dry brush. This can then be finished off with another coat of black wash, just to darken everything down, blurring all those colors together. And that is the head of the weapon finished, which also means that we've got the wrappings on the actual handles of the weapons themselves, as well as the weird top knot that Chaos Warriors like to have. So let's jump into that with a dark red. Taking that dark red, we can base coat all of the areas, and this is a nice, quick, simple process. Once the dark red base coat is completed and dry, we can go in and highlight each sections of the wrapping with a brighter red. Once that is then dry, we can also cover all of these areas with a nice crimson wash to bring it all together and we can start to tackle the hair. In order to paint the hair, we're going to be doing the exact same thing as we did the armor because we're painting black hair. However, in order to get a slight difference in the tones and colors, rather than using a skin tone for the highlight, we're actually going to be using the desaturated pale yellow which when we apply the wash will also sap some color out, but give us a nice difference between the hair itself and the armor. Then what we can do is move across to the skull on the top knot once the hair is painted. 
And this we're going to be base coating in the dark brown that we've used throughout the paint job. Give this a nice broad highlight with the desaturated yellow we've been using, aiming to leave all of the browns in the recesses. Then with a final light gray highlight, we can pick out those most prominent edges of the skull. So the ridges around the noses, the eye sockets and things like that. And then finish it off and make it look aged with a nice sepia wash. This brings us to the last main section on the model, which as of yet is unpainted. And that is all of the metallic areas across the model itself. And we're going to be using the same method for all of the areas and attack it in the same way. So we can start off now and we'll be grabbing a dark gold tone paint and carefully base coating all of the metal areas across the model. We do want to be careful here and go slowly so as to not catch any of the painted areas that we've already completed. However, if we do make a mistake, we can simply come in with a wet brush, try and mop all of that away quickly before there is any damage or harm done or any staining or metallic flakes sticking to a non-metallic area on the model. With this base coat done, we can then come in and highlight using a brighter gold, using this to catch all of the edges in the form of an edge highlight, as well as doing some volumetric highlights where we did similar ones along the armor just to build that consistency of light across the model. Once this layer of metals is dry, we can then come in with a wash. And here we can use different types of washes in different colors, but we're going to be opting for a mid green wash. This can be applied and once fully dry, we can then go in and do some final highlights using the bright gold we used earlier, catching all of the brightest panels and the sharpest edges. With all that done and dry, we are left with a model that just needs to be mounted on a base and is ready for a game. Overall, I'm quite happy with this model. It took around three to four hours on its own. And obviously if I was painting a unit, I could batch paint certain stages of it, which would mean that I'm not spending a large amount of time to get a nice looking army on the table. If you would rather see a video around painting more models than just this one model that we've got here, why not check out this playlist here where I tackle things just like that. Otherwise, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe so that we can see you next time.